good evening children welcome to our science class now we are in lesson 12 atomic structure this is a video session of this lesson a recapitulation in our last class we studied about atoms dalton's atomic theory advantage of dalton's atomic theory fundamental particles present in an atom discovery of electrons discovery of protons discovery of neutrons and thomson's atomic model these are the topics we discussed in a last video session now we are going to discuss the remaining topics in this lesson first we have to know valency all the atoms they are not alone when it was alone it is not stable so it wants to combine with other atom to make a stable in a cloud so all the atom they have a valence that is it is combining with other atom the combining capacity of those atoms we can call it as a valence so in different atoms can have a different valence valence is the measure of the combining capacity of atoms or molecules either it is atom so because atoms only combining to form a molecules therefore it is the capacity of an atom of a single element to react and combine with a particular number of atoms of another element so either it is combining or reacting with one another to make a new molecule to attain the stability so this particular property we can call it as a valency types of valency uh, we have a three types of valency they are primary or classical in coordinations in our when you go for higher classes you can study these types of valences it's a simple compounds to the components of the bigger one multiple compounds either it can be useful to study for a simple compound or else a bigger compound it's a coordination compound and then the transition metal so you in this class you can in in this standard it is very little bit you can study that is the main thing what is valency and all is enough when you go for higher classes you can able to know what the types of valency valency with respect to hydrogen because hydrogen is the first one element in the periodic table so valency of an element is also determined with respect to other atoms generally the valency of an atom is determined with respect to hydrogen hydrogen and chlorine because hydrogen is a monoatomic hydrogen and chlorine so these are the elements where compare with other elements to know about the valency of the other elements here we have a sum of the molecule on that valency so hydrogen chloride the molecular formula is hcl in that the valency is 1 water the water's molecular formula is h2o and then hydrogen is 2 ammonia in that the formula is nh3 the three nitrogen valency methane it's ch4 here the carbon has a valency 4 next the valency we are going to calculate with respect to the chlorine valency of chlorine is 1 so number of chlorine atoms which one atom of an element can combine is called a valency so based on the valency it can combine to make a new compound in sodium chloride the formula is nacl one chlorine atom combines with the one sodium atom so the valency of sodium is 1 but in magnesium chloride the formula is mgcl2 here the valency of an magnesium is 2 because the valencies can be written at the top, bottom of the molecules the next one is valency with respect to hydrogen so in another way we are going to compare the valency of the other element with respect of hydrogen when the atoms of one atom of an element can combine because the valency of hydrogen is 2 for example in a magnesium oxide mgo both the magnesium and the hydrogen valency is 2 so we are not representing any valency number at the bottom of the molecule variable valency what is the meaning of variable valency because 
some atoms depends upon the place they may have a different valencies these atoms are more than one valency some places they have a one valency other places they have a more than one two like that they have a valency for that example we have copper combines with oxygen it forms a two products copper oxide and then cuprous oxide for particular place it has a two valency and another place it has a three valency so depends upon the place it may have a different valency here we have a sum of the tabular column of metal elements the variable valency see first one is copper copper has a one plus formula cu plus it has a one valency and then cupric it has a two valency mercurous two valency mercuric also two valency but the molecular is different thing ferrous two and three valency plumbus two and four valency stannous two and four valency and then how does that is gold also have a one and three valency here how the ions are forming you see the sodium as combined with the so chlorine to form a sodium chloride this is the combining capacity of sodium to form a sodium chloride an ion first what is happening it is forming an ion in a two atoms one has been positive another one is negative because the oppositely charged atoms can combine together to form a, a new compound or a molecule because the opposite charges can attract it towards it in that they are sharing a equal number of electrons in one is a giving a electron to me become a positive another one is taking a electron and become a negative the number of electrons in an atom deciding a positive or negative in an atom so we can call it as a ion either if it is a positive ion or negative simply we can call it as a ion we have a two different types of ion one is a cation another one is anion cation is a positively charged ion it can easily attract negative ion so the positive is attracting negative and then anion is a negatively charged ion it easily absorbs the positive ion so we have a two types of ion here we have a sodium plus that is cation chlorine minus anion so both are changing the energy levels of electrons and then make a sodium chloride compound this is how the anions and cations are formed different valent ions so electron in the outer shell so they have a different valency depends upon the electrons they have so in a lithium it has a group 1a element carbon 4a and then uh, sulfur 6a so here now they have a different valencies different that is different combining capacity to make a compound here are the sum of the compounds they are acting as a anion so in hcl cl minus h2so4 sulfate nitrate carbonate phosphate oxide sulfide hydroxide so these are all the negative atoms we have in the compound next we have a positive sodium potassium ammonium magnesium calcium and aluminum these are the positively charged ions we can call it as a cations chemical formula or molecular formula how to write a chemical formula in that steps one we have to know the symbols of the each and individual atom or element and then write the valencies so what is the valency of the particular element and then interchanging the valencies so the first one atoms valency will be lies on the second one atom and second one atoms valency will lies on the second one so this is the method to follow to write a chemical formula or a molecular formula next naming a chemical compound so whatever the compound it has a positive charge and negative charge particles here we have a sodium chloride in that nacl is a molecular formula here na plus it is a cation and cl minus is a anion in the next we have a magnesium hydroxide mgoh2 is a molecular formula here mg2 plus so in the previous slide only we studied the first one atoms uh, valency lies on the second atom and second one will be on the first so mg mg2 valency oh is a one valency next we are also we have the sum of the compounds and their molecular formula calcium chloride cacl2 and then cu2o 
then your calcium valence is 2 copper valence is 1 chemical equation so how to write a chemical equation first we have to write a word equation for example when the water is reacting salt so we can write in the word water plus salt so obviously it gives a water so salt solution likewise write in the word replace the word with the chemical formula so what is the formula of water h2o then sodium chloride that is the formula for salt NaCl so obviously what is the solution NaCl and then h2o likewise first word equation then the molecule equation that is a chemical formula then we need to check how many number of atoms taking part in the reaction finally we have to balance it then we have to write a what state that a particular reactant either it is a solid liquid or a gaseous aqua solution means the salt has been dissolved in the water aqueous salt dissolved in the water balancing the chemical equation so how to balance the chemical equation so initially the number of times the element occurs both sides so how many for example if we are taken two hydrogen so both the sides you can check either product side and reactant side we have a two hydrogens then the element which occur least number so which is the least amount we are getting that one you have to count first then we have to furtherly know the more number of atoms taking part in the reaction in order to balance the atoms then two or more elements act in the same number so we can what we can do to balance it then finally you have to count how many metals and how many non-metals are present in the reaction the number of molecules of reactants and products is written as coefficient you know in the max itself you are studying coefficient means the per number which lies on the formulas the formula should not be changed to make the elements equal so we should not change the formula only we need to adjust the number of atoms taking part in the reaction then fractional method of balancing fractional method of balancing means so how many is there fraction you know how to balance it likewise we need to balance for example o2 h2 o3 po4 balance on based on the atomic ma number its atomic number as well as its valency we need to balance it so how the information we are get from the equation so in well, we see the equation sir we know with what state of the matter if it's a solid liquid or a gaseous then heat changes color changes condition what condition is needed concentrated or diluted and then what is the speed of the reaction so these are the things we can easily know when we saw the equation and then loss of the chemical combination while the two elements and compounds are coming what are the laws the law of conservation mass though no change should be in the mass loss of constant proportion constant proportion means how many parts if one is to two ratio or one is to three ratio like that the product will be formed law of multiple proportion multiple proportion means if one number we are taken either it gives two or more three so the multiple numbers we have to find out gay lusik's law so for the gaseous product we have to find out the gay lusik's law under the particular temperature and pressure what volume of gases has been taken that much volume of gases only we need to get a product law of conservation of mass there is nothing but when the reactant what amount of the reactants you are taken that equal amount for example water and sugar we are taken 50 gram 50 gram so the product will be 100 gram of solution likewise when the reactants weight and the product weight should be equal this is called a law of conservation of mass during a chemical reaction atoms are neither created nor destroyed the number of atoms remains constant throughout the reaction since the number of atoms does not change the mass must remain constant as well so the no changes in the weight only they are saying about law of conservation of mass law of constant proportion so in a chemistry the law of definite proportion sometimes called a Prout's law or law of constant composition state that a given chemical compound always contains its components elements in a fixed ratio and does not depends on its source of method of preparation so whatever the reactants we are taken it can be having its own proportion but it will not get the proportion of the source 
assignment for this class what is in valency what is variable valency how to write a chemical formula then write the steps to naming chemical compounds what is law of conservation of mass thank you children have a wonderful day